Hello. It's good to see you. Thank you for returning to my class. It's always a pleasure to have you here. You're always so attentive um, and you take the best notes. So thank you so much for coming back. Um, today, we are going to be talking about an item that is very common out there in the world. And you're going to come across this pretty much anywhere you go in the world. It's not even... Um, it's not even a regional thing, you know. We've gone over some things that you'll only see in certain parts of the world. This is something that you're going to see pretty much anywhere and everywhere. And we're going to examine it in its various forms. We're going to talk today about the plate. And this is an example of a plate. This particular plate came from my own kitchen cabinet. Now, a lot of times when you see plates, they're going to be either in someone's kitchen or in a restaurant. Remember how we talked about restaurants? Mm -hmm. You will see them in restaurants. And this is a nice example of a plate. This is a stoneware plate uh, from Bauhaus. And uh, this is part of a set that I have. A lot of times, uh, people in their homes will have a set where, uh, like they'll have plates, bowls, maybe cups. I know that we're getting beyond this particular chapter. Uh, we will talk about bowls and cups later, but right now I'm going to focus on this. But they'll have a whole set of dishes that look the same, like they'll have some of the same features. This is part of a set that I have. It is stoneware, like I mentioned. You see, it's a little bit shiny, just a little. Um, I have bowls, cups, and this is a salad plate. I also have dinner plates like this. So, um, this is what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to talk about plates. Did you have any questions so far? Have you had any experience with plates? Okay, well that's okay. That's okay. If you don't know anything about them yet, that's that's completely okay. That's why we're here. Um, so I think before we go any further, uh, since you're not very familiar with plates, I think it might help to actually go over a few uh, basic bits of information about plates. Some things you might want to take notes on. Okay. First of all, what is a plate? And we have a definition of plate. It is a broad, mainly flat vessel commonly used to serve food. So a lot of times when uh, you are served food or you are preparing food, um, it may be prepared in a different uh, vessel, like a pot or a pan, but it will be served ultimately for eating on a plate a good portion of the time. So that's just a basic definition of what a plate actually is. But it can be a little bit more broad than that. It can also refer to a range of objects which have in common uh, being thin and flat. So um, they may have different shapes overall or they might be different sizes, but the common feature of most plates is that they will be thin and flat, typically. And another thing to keep in mind, because you know that um, sometimes we have products here that have a wide variety of uses, not just one or two, it's also important to remember that food or other products can be set on the plate. Um, you may find what is known as a napkin nested on the, in the middle of the plate when you're seated at the table um, for a nice decorative touch. Or there might be a place card there. Um, you know, your, your eating utensils may be rested on the plate, but don't eat those. Now you have to remember that just because it is on the plate doesn't necessarily mean it's food. As we just learned, uh, other products and other items can also be set on the plate. Um, typically, you are not going to eat the utensils or the napkins. Um, so just keep that in mind. I mean, we don't want to draw attention to ourselves 
uh, by, by chewing on a spoon or anything like that. So just, you know, look around at the other people and try to do what they're doing if you have any questions. Okay, now what are plates made of? Now that's a very good question, and that again can be, and there's not just one single answer. Plates are typically comprised of, can you guess what they might be made of? Squirrels. No, not squirrels. Not this time. Um, let's see. I'm sorry. What was the question again? We're talking about, um, at this point, let's talk about the different aspects of a plate. There are different parts. No matter how the plate is made, there are different sections of the plate. And I'm going to pick up my little salad plate and point these out to you. The first part of a plate is going to be the well, which is the bottom of the plate where the food is placed. I'll show you. The well would be this part here. This is um, where the food will be placed on your plate. And you could have just a single type of food, like you could have spaghetti and it could just fill up the whole plate. Or you could have different types of food, like you could have, I don't know, green beans and carrots and mashed potatoes and Salisbury steak, or don't worry about what all those things are yet. Those are different types of food. So you could have more than one type of food on your plate. So this is the well, this part, the big part. That's the largest part of the plate. Okay, and then we have the second part, which is the lip, which is the flattish uh, raised outer part of the plate. Now that is not to be confused with the rim, that is actually a separate part. So you have the lip, which is the flattish raised outer part of the plate. I think maybe right here. Now this plate is really, um, it has qu a, quite a dramatic part here. Now some plates, I'll show you this plate. Now this is another plate out of my kitchen. This plate is made of uh, plastic or melamine. Um, you see it's, it's much lighter and it looks very different. You can see it's much thinner right here. It doesn't have that big raised up side on it like my salad plate does. But this is still a plate. See? And it, that's right, it's also bigger than the other one. So we have the lip. That's the second part. And the third part. Now we're going to talk about the rim, which is the outer edge of the piece. Often decorated, for example, with gilding. And I have an example of that. I have a picture I want to show you that is a good example of that. Now this is a plate with a lip and a central well, and it also has relief and painted decoration, including a gilded rim. Now you'll see that there is elaborate decoration in here. Uh, there are two swans. They look like they're trying to eat each other, but I'm pretty sure it's just a loving gesture. But you see how it has this different color? Right along the edge there. That's the gilding, that's the gold rim on there. And it goes all the way around and it provides a nice uh, accent around the plate and it has decorative stuff all over it. So this plate is obviously much more ornate than say a simple little salad plate. This has no, um, this is not gilded, it has no decorations, it's just, it's just a plain little plate. All right. And there is a fourth and final part of the plate, and that is the base, which is the underside of the plate. Now I want to show you how different they can, the base can look, but it's still the same. If you look at the base, of the salad plate. You see it's just a ring around there. And this gives the plate support and adds to the overall strength of the plate. And you can really kind of see it there. You can see how it's, it's sort of set apart and it's not flush with this part. 
With some plates, it's very obvious. Other plates, it might be more gradual. It may not be as dramatic as that. And then if we look at the this plate, the little melamine plate, the base is under here. It's way under, like you have to come way down here to see it. And it doesn't come all the way out like it does on the salad plate. But it will work just as well to make the plate more stable, to give it a little bit more strength than it would have without a base. So those are the four uh, components, I guess, of the basic structure of the plate. And now we're going to talk about the materials. Yeah, we got a little bit ahead of ourselves, but now we're going to talk about the materials um, that plates can be made of. Now you guessed squirrels, but no, they're not made of, they're not made of squirrels. Um, they can be made of various materials. So there's not really just one right answer for this. Um, here are some examples or some, some of the things, some of the materials that you might find plates to be made of. There's ceramic, porcelain, plastic, like my little fish plate, glass, and I can show you an example of a glass plate. This is another plate from my kitchen cabinets. It's kind of hard to see because it's just, it's just clear glass. And it's just made of solid glass that was probably, um, it was just molten glass poured into a little form and pressed. It's kind of hard to tell, but the edges are not completely even. They're a bit uneven, and I think that's from being poured into a mold. Because you can see, well, it's kind of hard to see, but on the back, there are indentations here that look like fruit, like apples and grapes, and cherries and strawberries and leaves. It, it's very difficult to see because it's clear, but this is a glass plate. Remember what I was telling you about the base? Sometimes it's gradual. This one is gradual. You see, you don't really see any ridge there. You don't see any, any um, delineation or anything. It's just very gradual, but that's still the base of the plate. So that's a glass plate. And plates can be made of a few more things, too. We have melamine, wood, metal, stone, and some very, very old plates. You don't see many stone plates anymore. And paper plates. And I can show you some paper plates. Would you like to see a paper plate? Okay. This is an example of a paper plate. It is, it is kind of similar to my salad plate. Yes, it is. It has these dramatic sides here. It doesn't just gradually go up. It goes up like this. And it's just a plain white paper plate. And it's made by a company called Chinette. And it's hard to see, but it actually says Chinette. It's kind of imprinted on there, but it, it's kind of hard to see. Yeah, it's okay. Um, and it has a textured back to keep it from sliding around if you set it down somewhere. But this is a paper plate. This is some, these are some of the more expensive paper plates. Um, there are different types of paper plates. I can show you a pack of paper plates. Let me see, right here. Now you saw how thick that one was. Now these are very thin, uh, very inexpensive economy plates. There are actually 90 plates in this little stack right here. 90. Do you remember how many 90 is? That's right. So you can kind of look here and see how thin these little paper plates are. Um, you can't put much on here. Um, certainly nothing with a lot of liquid because it will soak through the paper. Uh, and the paper plate can actually disintegrate. But these paper plates come in handy for other things. Uh, of course, you can eat off them, but they come in handy for other things as well. And we will talk about that in a little bit. But first, I want to talk to you about the different sizes and types of plates. 
because as you may have guessed, uh, even the sizes and types are different. We definitely have different sizes and types. Because we like variety, don't we? <laughs> That's right. First, you have the saucer. Unfortunately, I don't have an example of a saucer, but a saucer is a small plate with an, in an indentation for a cup. Now, if you were to look at a saucer, it's going to be a little plate. They're never big. They're, they're about that big. And in the well, remember the well? There's going to be um, a circle in there that's kind of sunk in a little bit more than the well. And it will be just the perfect size for a matching cup, which we'll talk about cups later. It's um, something that people drink from. You can actually set the cup right down in there and it nestles in just perfectly. And you can leave the cup sitting on the saucer and you can drink your tea or your coffee that way. And you have your saucer to set the cup back on. So that's one type of plate. Another type is the appetizer dessert or the salad plate, which that's right, that's a salad plate. They vary in size from four to nine inches. <clears throat> and we'll look at the salad plate again. <clears throat> Sorry. You see, this is the salad plate. So it's the perfect size if you were going to make a little... We will go over salads another day. Um, a salad can be um, any... There are a lot of varieties of salads, but for the, for the sake of this discussion, we'll say it's some, some mixed green vegetables, maybe with some other, um, like tomato or carrot or whatever you like in your salad. I actually like raisins in my salad. Um, but we'll go over all that. So you could just put your salad on here and it would be just the right amount if you were going to have a salad with your meal, uh, and not as the main dish. This would be perfect for a little salad. So that's why it's called a salad plate. And it doesn't have to be as big as a dinner plate. If you were having salad as your main meal, you might actually would use a dinner plate for your salad. Sometimes I just put it in a big bowl. But here is a paper version of the appetizer dessert salad plate right here. Now again, these are thin. Uh, these are everyday paper plates. Um, and they are six and seven eighths inches across. So they're actually smaller than this. You can see it's not as big. But it would be perfect if you needed a little plate to put a piece of pie on, or a piece of cake, or just, just a little appetizer. A little plate like this would be perfect. You don't need a great big plate for that. Now this contains 48 plates, and these are just inexpensive little everyday paper plates. Aren't they cute? And they have a pretty design on them too. A lot of paper plates will have little flowers on them, or some sort of design like that. All right, and we also have a bread and butter plate. Now this is also going to be a small plate, <clears throat> about six to seven inches for individual servings. So if you had, like say you had a loaf of bread, <clears throat> sorry, at your table, and you wanted to cut it and put some butter on it, it would be a perfect little plate to butter your own bread. And it's just going to be for you. You're not sharing it. So it's just an individual serving plate. And the salad plate would work for that or the little paper plates. And then we have lunch or dessert plates, uh, which are typically nine inches. So it's going to be a little bit bigger than my little salad plate. That would probably work too. But you could put a lot of dessert on there. <laughs> Personally, I don't think you need a nine inch plate for dessert. I think that's a bit much. <clears throat> Sorry. There's a frog in my throat, but we'll go over that another day. We'll also discuss allergies. <clears throat> All right. Now, finally, we have dinner plates. Now, these are large. They're 10 to 12 inches and include uh, buffet plates. And this, I guess, would be a, like a dinner plate. It's a little informal. I guess if you were having an informal dinner, you could use this plastic plate. Um, 
but we actually use these a lot in my house. I don't know why, we just do. <laughs> um, yeah, so um, a dinner plate would be basically this size right here. So usually a dinner plate's gonna be a little more formal and fancy than that. <laughs> That's okay. And then there are serving plates, uh, which tend to be larger. They could be 11 to 14 inches. Now that is not a plate you're going to eat off of. Um, you know, it's going to be something that you serve, like you're going to have maybe like a roasted duck on there or whatever your main course is. You can have it on the serving plate. And that is something you're actually going to set on the table for everyone to take some to put on their individual plates. So don't eat straight from the serving plate. You will be like the guy in the, the National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation movie and, and nobody likes that in real life. There are also decorative plates. Um, and these are for display, not really so much for eating out of. Um, you wouldn't really eat out of a decorative plate. It's really just kind of something to look at. Um, the plate I showed you originally is a good example of a decorative plate. Um, it's going to have fancy stuff all over it, or sometimes when you visit certain places, uh, you go into a, a gift shop, like if you go to Disney World, you can get decorative plates that have um, different pictures from Disney World uh, painted onto the plate. So you're not going to actually eat off it. You're going to put it up for display so other people can see them and admire it. It's like a little piece of art. So it's not really like a functional plate. In fact, a lot of them on the back will even say, you know, do not, not for, you know, basically don't eat off this. Or don't wash it. Don't, you know, it's just for decorative purposes only. And along those lines, commemorative plates have designs reflecting a particular theme, like I was saying about the Disney World plates. Um, so they will have a particular theme to them. And then there are chargers. Now chargers look like plates, but they are also decorative. They are 13 to 14 inches. It's a decorative plate placed under a separate plate um, used to hold food. And the charger plate just gives you a nice accent. It's like a, a nice color. Like if you had, like say this was a plain white plate, the charger a lot of times is made of plastic or just a thin metal and you place it underneath your dinner plate. Like you might have a beautiful burgundy color or a gold color. It's just really going to stand out and it's going to add a nice pop of color to your table. So the charger is what your dinner plate would sit on. You're not going to eat off the charger. You're just going to set your dinner plate on it. <clears throat> now plates can have any shape. I've seen star-shaped plates, heart-shaped plates. Um, they can have any shape you want. There's really no limit to it. Any shape. So you need to be prepared for just about any any shape, you know, just again, if you don't, if you're not sure, just kind of look and see what the people around you are doing. And then usually if you do what they're doing, you'll be okay. <clears throat> now the most common shape of plate is round, but you can also see square and something that's called squircle. I'll show you a squircle plate in a minute. Uh, a coop and a ribbon plate. The ribbon plate is kind of decorative. Squircle. I know I love that word. Squircle. It's cute. Here's an example of a squircle plate. Uh, and the good thing about squircle plates, here's one. You see how it's not really square and it's not really a circle. It's kind of both. It's That's where the word comes from. Squircle. <laughs> uh, it's a portmanteau. Examples of a squircle plate look like this. And the cool thing about a squircle plate is that they um, hold more food than a round plate, but they still fit in the same uh, amount of space in a cupboard. So yeah, it is really cool. It's very unique. Um, and they look really nice with a charger behind them too. You might not think so, but they do. So that's a squircle plate. 
I currently don't have any of these all mine around. And you can also have square plates. You can have um, any shape you want. You can have triangle shaped plates if you wanted to. Another thing about plates you might want to know. People all over the world have collected and displayed plates for centuries, going way back. Um, it was a real art form. It's been an art form uh, in all different parts of the world, China, Europe, Asia. I mean, well, China's in Asia, but all over the place. You could go back 200 years and find examples of decorative plates. So it's really cool. Also... The practice of collecting souvenir plates was popularized in the 19th century by Patrick Palmer Thomas. Patrick Palmer Thomas. Patrick Palmer Thomas was a Dutch-English uh, nobleman whose plates featured um, transfer designs commemorating special events or picturesque locale. Usually, most of the plates were a blue and white color. He's lots of blue and white in his in his um, plates. <clears throat> Christmas plates became very popular with many Europeans, um, in many European companies uh, producing them in the early 20th century. Uh, once they were mass produced, they became much more common in the typical European home and in the typical um, home in the United States. Um, you see, you saw a lot of collective uh, commemorative. Decorative plates back in the 50s, 40s and 50s in the United States was very popular. Now let's see. I have example. I have an example of a couple plate. Actually, I think it's coupe. I can't remember. This is this is an example of that. I think it's coupe. I think it's misspelled here, which can actually be argued to be a type of a bowl instead of a plate. You see how it's kind of deep. It's, you know, it, most plates are, are kind of shallow. They're kind of thin and flat. But this has a deeper well. My salad plate kind of has that to an extent. The difference is, and it's very hard to tell, but if you look at it, and I, I don't think you can see it, but right in the middle, it's raised up slightly. And I really love that because in a way, it keeps the food kind of separated. It all just kind of... If it has, like, if you have corn off the, you know, corn off the cob and you have that juice with it, it all just kind of runs down here and doesn't bleed over into other stuff as much. So I think this is still considered just a regular plate. But if it had the taller sides, it, it might be the, the coop. I may be wrong about that. But um, I, I don't think you see these, at least not in the United States. I, I don't think I've ever run across this in real life. I guess it's out there. And here's an example of a ribbon plate. Now this is really fancy. Look at that. Now you see the way it's made? The way it's made, there are holes in here that are part of the plate. Um, it has decor It's a decorative plate with slots around the circumference to enable a ribbon to be threaded through for hanging. So again, you see this one's sitting on a, a little holder, but you can hang these from the wall as well. And it's really just for decorative purposes. You're not going to actually eat off of that. Because if you get gravy in this ribbon, it's just, you know, all hell's going to break loose. So you really just want to put this up to look at. Now there is another type of plate um, that we actually did not talk about, and that is called styrofoam. Um, you will see styrofoam plates a lot at family reunions, church functions, maybe cafeterias, and I know you're not familiar with those terms yet, and that's okay. We'll get into all that later. Now this is an example of a small styrofoam plate. It is extremely lightweight. Um, it is soak proof, which means liquids are not going to go through it. You know, it's, um, see it's kind of shiny, yeah. And it does have a little bit of a decorative, little swirly thing around here. But these are very inexpensive plates. Um, you know, a lot of people don't use styrofoam. But if you see this, it's called styrofoam. You can touch it. Feel that edge right there. See how nice that is? Yeah, 
It, it does have a little texture to it. I feel that. Mm-hmm. Now pinch it and feel how thin that is. It's very thin, but it's very light. Very lightweight. In fact, you can get enormous bags of these. So if you were in charge of, say, organizing a family reunion, as I am <laughs> next month, uh, you might acquire a big bag of plates for all the people coming to have something to eat off of. This is 200 plates, and they are soak-proof foam plates. It says they're strong and leak-proof. This is a big, fat, value pack of plates. You can get smaller packs, too. Another cool plate. Now, here's an example of a different shape for you. Now, see, this isn't really rectangular, because it kind of goes out this way. Um, it's almost oval slash rectangular, because it kind of bends out this way a little bit. Now, this plate has what's called compartments. That's these different little sections in here. Let's count the compartments. One, two, three, four, five. So this way, personally, I like the plates with the compartments because say, say you have some uh, candied sweet potatoes. You could put those here. Your green beans here. Some mashed potatoes here. Um, you could put your biscuit here or your roll or whatever bread you have. And over here, you could put something like maybe some barbecue or, you know, whatever else you're getting. And depending on how much you want of something, you could use some of the smaller compartments or the medium size or the big one. So if you wanted um, something like asparagus, you could put that over here in this section because it's longer. It might fit a little better. And here's what it looks like on the back. See, it's not solid. You can see the compartments here. It's like a little road cut through a mountain, isn't it? <laughs> so that is a, a plate with compartments. And those also come in big packs like this. See? Yeah. Now, most people typically are not going to use those in their everyday life at home. Some people might. Um, my grandmother used paper plates a lot. She used them all the time. I'm not really sure why. She just liked to use little paper plates. Um, most people will use plates that you can wash and reuse, like my my glass plate here. You know, they will... Um, They'll use something like this that they can wash and use again and they don't just throw it away. One of the reasons people use paper or styrofoam is that um, they don't have to wash it. They just throw it away. Um, and that's why they, they will use those. They may be in a, a situation where they don't want to have to wash a lot of plates. Like the family reunion where if you're expecting, you know, 150 people, uh, you don't want 150 plates to wash at the end of the day. <laughs> I don't. So um, that's why you get disposable plates. And we don't need to argue over um, the, the, the ethics of styrofoam. We're not really here for that today. We're here just to discuss different types of plates. Now here's a cool thing about plates that you may have picked up on looking at the paper plates in the bags. One neat thing about paper plates, and this is actually not a magic trick, you can stack them. Like you can nestle them one on top of the other, especially if they're all made the same way. They stack beautifully. Look how, look how organized and neat these plates look here. Now, how many do we have in this stack? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's eight plates in that neat stack. So it makes it very easy to store them. You could just put them all in a stack and set them in the cabinet. It's wonderful. You can also see, as you may have already noticed, that you can get plates in uh, that have different decorative colors, like a light blue or a red, dark blue, yellow, red, and green. Now, when you are serving plates, don't stack them this way, especially if they have food in them. Because if you're serving food to people, 
uh, the person who got the red plate and the blue, blue plate are going to be mad because if you set this green plate on top, you're going to squish part of their food and it's going to be really gross and awkward and no, you want to make sure that you only stack your plates if there's no food on them. So that might be an important thing you want to write down. That's, that's, that's pretty, pretty important. And here's another example. I just thought this was pretty. I wanted to show you the pretty flowers that decorate this plain white plate. Isn't that nice? Now this looks like a dinner plate, but it would be a more uh, informal dinner plate. A more formal plate wouldn't have all these fun, playful flowers on there, typically. And now here's another example of stacked plates. I know it's very exciting. I felt the same way. Now these are square. These are the square plates I was telling you about. See, now they don't have to be round and I have proof right there. These are square. Isn't that awesome? It is really nice. They do look like ceiling tiles. I didn't know you were in that class. You're so quiet. Yeah, they do kind of look like ceiling tiles, but you would not want to eat off ceiling tiles because a long time ago, they were made of a product called asbestos and that's bad. If you eat off something, make sure it's a real plate. Don't eat off ceiling tiles because asbestos. Now, remember I was telling you that you can take paper plates and you can do different things with them? Look at this. You can use them to create art. You can use them for um, what's known as arts and crafts. A lot of young children like to do this. Like, see, you take just a paper plate and you can paint it green. And, and little people love to paint. Little humans love to paint. Um, my little humans love it. So they paint it green and then they take another plate and they can cut it. Or you can just paint this part blue. Or you can cut out a part and lay it there, painted blue, and then you cut a part here and here and put little blue polka dots all over your fish and one Google eye right there and you have yourself a cute little fish. A fish. We'll go over a fish later. It's a living creature, but it's made to look like a living creature. This is not actually alive. I mean, you, you can't. No, it's not going to be alive. Yeah, you can hold it. You want to keep that? Okay. Well, yeah, you can keep it. Look at this, though. I forgot to show you this. This is kind of a squircle, isn't it? Sort of. Uh, it's basically uh, not really rounded here a lot, but these are plastic plates that are disposable. And it's from a brand called Hefty, and they make several different kinds of plates. They also make cups uh, and plastic silverware. There are 20 plates and they're nice and tightly stacked in there. They're very thin and these are red. That's the color. That's the color red. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's encased in plastic to hold them together until you're ready to use them. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, you, you, okay. I'm going to ask you to put away the fish picture because I need you to pay attention. Okay. Just, um, Okay, put it in your notebook. You can look at it later. I want to show you another thing you can do with paper plates. Look at this. Isn't this cute? It looks like a little banjo or a guitar or something. I would say it's a banjo, which is a musical instrument. So here's the plate here. You can see it's painted blue and it has little stickers on it. And these are the strings. And there's the little neck thing on it. Isn't that neat? And it's just a little thing that, um, a little craft that you can do with a little bit of paint. It looks like the strings are actually what's called rubber bands. And, um, they're elastic and stretchy and it looks like they've just stretched some across the, pa the paper plate. And then they've just sort of taped or glued that on there. So that's cute. Now here is another cool thing you can do with paper plates. This is what's known as a valentine, um, and that is where you might express love or affection for another person. Now, this particular design is known as a Pokeball, which is from the game Pokemon. The red with the black and white, 
And when you, re when you slide this red part up, it reveals a little heart that says, I choose you. So it's a cool little way to make, um, make your valentine. And it's held together. It's, there's a hole punched through there, and it's held together with a little brad right there. So it's a little valentine made out of paper plates. That's really cute. And here's another thing. Now, if you have someone, a young person who's learning to tell time, this might be a good way to um, help them learn to tell time. You take a plate and you add these little numbers on here. And then you can move the hands around and they can practice learning to tell time. Now, once you do this with the plate, you don't want to add food to it. Um, because possibly, whatever food you add might loosen up these numbers. And it will probably make your food taste a little funny. So, once you use it for arts and crafts, you can't really reuse it as a plate to eat off of. And one final thing, we need to go over a few, a few things that might confuse you once you go out into the world. Um, there are things that are plates, and we've gone over that. You know, they can be in different shapes, different colors, different sizes. But there are some things in the world that are not plates. And we need to learn to tell, we need to learn to differentiate things that are plates from things that are not plates. And this can be really challenging sometimes. Um, some... Sometimes people have an issue with it. So I'm going to go over a few things that you might confuse with plates. And this is very important that you do not, you do not mistake these things for plates because it can lead to very unfortunate uh, circumstances. The first thing is this. Now this is a wheel that will be part of what is known as an automobile. Okay. Now, yes, it is round like a plate, but it's, it's going to be very heavy. And if you try to put food in it, it's just going to run through and it's not going to work. Um, and it will probably get all over the automobile. And, it, you know, just if you see something like this, um, don't try to serve any food on that because it won't work. And this is also not a plate. Now, this, um, we'll go over this another day. This is not something that you're going to see every day, but you never know. Um, now, you could fit a lot of plates in this, but you cannot actually use this to uh, serve food or to eat food off of. It's, it's really not, it's not feasible, so to, um, don't try it. Okay, just... It's going to be very big if you see it more than likely, and you, you might want to just get away from it. Don't, don't try to eat off of it. This is also not a plate. Now, I know that you're, you're looking at this and saying, wait a minute, these are round. Plates are round. That's a plate. It's not a plate. If you, um, if you were to grab this and try to um, serve food on it, probably get the attention of the police and not in a good way. Um, this is, this is not something that works like, um, my little dinner plate or my salad plate. This is, um, this, this part of it is actually alive and wouldn't be, it wouldn't appreciate you putting pot roast on it or anything. So that's not a plate. Now these things here, can be very uh, perplexing. And there's a story behind all of these pictures, unfortunately. These are called bubbles. And um, yes, they're round. You're right, they're round. And we, it looks like we have lots of them. And they, well, they do look like glass. You're right. Well, you can touch the picture, but it's, see, we haven't gone over the difference between pictures and reality. Touching this is not going to let you know what, what bubbles are really like. We'll go over that another day. These are not plates. I'll just go ahead and tell you, I'll, you know, we'll do away with the suspense. These are not plates either. Um, bubbles are very, um, very delicate. They pop very easily. And if you were trying to put, say, a slab of uh, meatloaf on there, it's going to pop and then your meatloaf may taste soapy and it just ruins everything. You ruin the bubble, you ruin the meatloaf. These are not, these are not plates. 
This is also Bubbles, and he's not a plate either. I know his glasses look kind of like they might be plates, or at least the bottom of a Coke bottle, but they're not. This is also Bubbles, and he would probably have some really nasty things to say if you tried to put food on him. I can only imagine. Not a plate. <clears throat> This is Jeff Goldblum. He is also not a plate. Now, he is a dish, but he is not a plate. Do not put food on Jeff Goldblum. This is also Jeff Goldblum. He deserves more than one picture. Uh, if you try to put food on him, he may look at you like that. And this is also Jeff Goldblum. I just want you to see what he looks like in various uh, incarnations, I guess. What's that at the door? It's aliens. Don't answer it. So, that concludes our lesson on plates. Do you have any questions? Were, were plates ever made of squirrels? Not that I'm aware of. Now, anything is possible. Some things are highly unlikely. I don't know of anyone making a plate out of a squirrel, but you never know. Maybe one got smushed flat on the road and someone said, hey, it looks like a nice serving platter. I don't know, but I'm not aware of any. So maybe we need to just let go of the whole idea of squirrels as plates. Yeah, let's just keep that in this classroom. I don't know that you need to go out there asking about that, okay? Sometimes it's best not to draw attention to yourself. Did you have any more questions? Oh, you're welcome. You can certainly keep the, the fish picture, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you so much for coming back to my class. You're always one of my favorite students. You're always so attentive, and, and I really appreciate that. Okay? Great. Well, I look forward to seeing you again really soon.